I hope you all are having a good week. Uh, I know it's the final stretch of the semester, and many of us are just focused at the light at the end of the tunnel, right? We can just see it. We're trying to get to it. So I want to especially thank you all uh, for making the time to be here for today's talk, which I'm really excited to host. Uh, and I'm really grateful and excited to be hosting uh, our guest speaker today, uh, Dr. Dongwan Lee. Dr. Lee is a professor at Penn State University's Information School. Uh, and I'm excited to learn more from Dong Wan because he has deep expertise in data science, computational social science, and cybersecurity. And on top of that, how we might address online mis- and disinformation. Um, he, he's an ACM distinguished scientist and Fulbright cybersecurity scholar. Uh, he served as an NSF program director for cybersecurity education. And since 2017, he's been leading a really cool NSF project called CISFAKE, investigating how we might combat fake news. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Dr. Dongwen Lee. Take it away. Thank you. Ah, Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to share uh, three scenarios where I feel the uh, adversaries can exploit the latest AI techniques to sharpen their uh, fake news attacks better. And then I will finish the uh, you know, couple of implications at the end. All right, since I used the term uh, fake news uh, on the title, let me clarify because fake news is such a convoluted term these days, right? So this is a, a, one of my favorite uh, the paper showing the uh, taxonomy on different terms related. So this survey used three dimensions to define. First dimension is authenticity, whether the information is factually correct or not. Second dimension is intention of the creator. Did you have a bad intention or this the fake news was made by a mistake, for instance? And third dimension is about the format. Is it a, a traditional news format or is more like a social media meme type, right? So what I'm interested in uh, talking today is uh, are these two contexts factually incorrect information, and we assume that the intention of the creators are malicious. Okay? So when I say fake news, I really meant either fake news in the more uh, the restricted sense, or uh, the more generally disinformation, okay? uh, irrespective of the, their format. The other related term often reviews is, uh, for instance, misinformation. It's again factually incorrect, but you know we do not know really about the intention. And often this is the case, because uh, you know, what you find a lot in the internet you don't know the intention of the uh, the creator, right? so that that that's the commonly used the term. Uh, so so the you know from now on when I say fake news, just interpret this as either fake news if it's a news format or disinformation if it's the uh, non-news format. All right. So let me summarize what uh, has been going on. Uh, so called the fake news 1.0. So this is a really simplistic view. Uh, from the security context, we have a attack scenario and defense scenario. So first, in, on the attack scenario, imagine we have a, a person uh, who manually or semi-manually creates fake news and posts to uh, their website or their uh, you know, Facebook account to drive the traffic, which in, in turn uh, garners the profit. And we've seen many cases like this in the 2016 and 2020 elections, uh, where you know, it turns out that many Macedonian kids are creating the website and then they are making you know, hundreds of dollars or Euro, uh, euros a day which is uh, uh, the big uh, income uh, in that uh, the region. Right? Another scenario, we have a bit more sophisticated uh, actor who have resources and skills, and they can create the fake news, but their main interest is uh, spreading fake news uh, on the social network. Okay? So these are two really simple scenarios on the attack side. On the defense side, again, we are not sitting either. Uh, you know, people have developed uh, different types of the fake news detectors, and they launched it. And then you know the, those are running to monitor to uh, flag the any questionable content. Similarly, uh, virtually all social platforms has a, some sort of in-house solution to monitor and detect the social bar and social farm because there are you know uh, thousands of thousands of the fake accounts there, uh, and, and the, they uh, monitor what's going on, all the activities on the social network based on the uh, contentual features, as the network features or past uh, the historical uh, features and use it to determine uh, and then block the accounts. So those are the defense side. 
So to this landscape, my project asked the following question. So suppose all these fancy AI techniques are available, not just to us, but to the adversaries as well, who have skills, as well as the money, resources, right? Then what could they do? So we try to preemptively come up with the plausible scenarios uh, and then you know come up with the uh, potential solutions and hopefully to raise awareness uh, and then you know uh, notify to the uh, stakeholders. So that's the uh, goal of this project. So this new landscape where um, what the adversaries can actually explore, exploit the advanced AI techniques, let's call this as fake news 2.0. This is not term that I coined, it's just uh, people often use it, like it's more personalized, or sophisticated, more optimized, and uh, more the, the evadable uh, fake news is known as the 2.0. So I'm gonna present the three uh, scenarios. First, instead of the Macedonian key to manually create the fake news, what if the machine auto create the uh, artifact, uh, then what will happen? So that's the first scenario. Second scenario is I'm making 100 uh, euros a day, a month, and then suddenly my fake news website and accounts keep getting blocked. So I cannot make money, right? So what can I do? I could hire hackers to attack the ecosystem of a fake news detection so that the detection mechanism no longer detect my fake news. But that's the second scenario. Third scenario is now I have uh, the I'm the adversary with the skills and resources, and I want to use AI technique to strategize my spreading of the fake news so that I can maximize my influence while minimizing my, my detectability. So those are three uh, scenarios. So let me elaborate uh, one by one, but I'm gonna focus more on the scenario one and then scenario two and three, I will uh, stay at the high level and just, just to try to convey the main uh, intuition there. Okay. So you know, we've all heard this term deep fakes. Uh, roughly this is acronym between two terms, deep learning and fakes. So it just refer to any artifact that's made by or substantially enhanced by the uh, AI techniques, especially deep learning. And it comes in, in all different forms. It's the text, images, audios, uh, you know, the, the videos, or even the hybrid of them, right? And roughly speaking, within computer science, we've seen a lot of advancement uh, in two sub-communities, NLP for text and the uh, computer vision or computer graphics for uh, the multimedia uh, defects. So let me share a few examples uh, of these defects. So here I present you 12 uh, human faces. Uh, this is a mixture of the uh, defects as well as a real human photo. Okay? So there are two real human photos. I don't know if you can guess which ones are those two real human photos. Number six might be real. Number six, okay, because? Something back. It has a studio background. I see. Okay. So the, it has a studio background. So that's a fair, fair reason. Any other guess? The person the same. Number nine. Okay. So, you know, the truth is if you are not the trained uh, media forensic uh, eye, then this is virtually impossible, right? So you made the right guess, but actually the six and 12 are real human photos. They are my graduate students. The remaining tens are uh, photos of the non-existing people. Mm -hmm. So if you go to this website using the one of the GAN algorithms, page after page, they show the stunning human faces. Right? Now this is so scary because you know we, we can the machine can generate the images that we cannot really differentiate. But yet also there are the benefit, right? So for instance, if you need to use IP-free human faces for article, then this is nice uh, resources. What about the audio? Effective immediately. I request president of Penn State University to double Professor Dongwen Lee's annual salary. Okay. So you can guess whose voice I'm trying to mimic here, right? Right. So I didn't uh, purchase it. I just used the free version. So, you know, quality is a bit, uh, you know, uh, shaky, but if I'm willing to pay $30, I can access much better quality uh, defect audio model. Okay. And this is the audio and video combination. In this work, we present the first text-based 
video editing approach that lets editors insert new text in addition to cutting, copying, and pasting the existing transcript text. Our approach allows editing at any point and synthesizes the corresponding correct lip synced video. Okay. The market closed today with Apple's stock price at $191.45 per share. Here we replace 91.4 with 82.2. Okay. The market closed today with Apple's stock price at $182.25 per share. So here, what happened is, based on the input from the user uh, through transcript, instantly they create the matching mouse movement to the transcript, and then switch back to the original video, and also mimic the uh, the audio track. Right? Of course, as the research prototype still is limited in the sense that in order to attack this individual, you need a sufficient amount of the training data for this person. Right? Uh, but you know, if you are celebrities or politician, and you go to the YouTube. I think very easily you can access the hours of the video. So virtually, now we have a techniques to make someone say something they never say, and vice versa. Okay. So you know, just a few years ago, these techniques were only available to the experts and the very savvy computer scientists. Now they became the off-the-shelf commodity technology. I go to M Market, I just cool it, and I can easily download. This software, and then they can generate the astonishing uh, quality of the defects. What about the defect text, right? So this is uh, based on the uh, you know the uh, decades of research uh, through the probabilistic models, but these days uh, the uh, dominating solutions are uh, language models. So you know, simply put, they essentially calculate the probability distribution over word sequence. Right? So you know, by using the uh, training data. Uh, if you ask uh, what is the likelihood for the phrase such as wonder, wonderful word, then because this is commonly used, the probability will be much higher than another sentence saying that what a wonderful pig. So if your prompt is what a wonderful, then the language model is likely to give you word over pig as the next probable token. And they repeat this you know, again and again. Right? So that's how they generate this entire. So, you know, the we had uh, these uh, uh, techniques uh, working, but they tended to be uh, limiting in the sense that uh, so generated text are a bit short, right? Not the long enough a couple of the hundred of words, for instance. And then as you train the long sequence, then they tended to forget the, what they learned early on. And then their architecture didn't allow the parallel processing. So you cannot really learn large scale and so on. And all these things uh, sort of changes uh, the, to the game changer, especially uh, by the introduction of the transform architecture uh, in 2017. And then the uh, subsequent introduction of the general uh, pre-trained model, BERT, and then uh, GPT. Okay. So you know, it's, it's a bit ironical that the GPT uh, based on the Google's architecture is now sort of deleting the, uh, the language model, uh, the landscape. So you know, because of this, the uh, pre-trained model and then the general you know, so-called foundation models, people develop their own language model and start to donate and they share them. So I went to the hugging phase a few days ago and I checked how many uh, language models are available. There are over 10,000. Okay? And number one, most popular one is GPT-2 right now. Of course, not all these 10,000 are, are, are unique or quite different architecture, right? Many of them are simple variation of the uh, uh, largest scale one, but nevertheless, each one is capable of generating the fake text that uh, when you read it, it's really, uh, you know, flows very well. And then uh, you cannot tell the obvious difference from the human written text. So if you zoom in a few large scale one that the really requires the uh, huge resources to create, and then only big companies are capable of the, uh, creating these. And here is the showing the evolution. So y axis shows the uh, size of the parameter in the logarithmic scale. So this red line showing the trend is actually showing the exponential increase right now. Okay? So we already have a two or three models that surpass the uh, trillion level. And the many of them have uh, over 100 billion parameters. Okay? And then you know, the, uh, a few months ago, we came, uh, this, the uh, chat GPT came to the scene. That's supposedly based on the uh, GPT 3.5 architecture. Uh, whose spec doesn't reveal the parameter size. 
So I'm not entirely sure where to put it, but it says maybe somewhere there. Okay. Right. So this is the article that one of the language models generated around the 2020, so three years ago. The theme of the article was the robots come in peace. So if you read it, then you know you don't find the obvious grammatical letters. Things flow very well, and everything is sticking to the uh, theme of the robots come in peace. So very well written uh, essay. And in fact, this is experiment that the Guardian did. And then at the bottom of the article, they revealed that this is actually written by GPT-3, uh, making people got really excited or scared. And then fast forward, now a few weeks ago, we had a GPT-4 uh, introduced. And GPT-4 outperformed all previously uh, the family of the GPT by large margin. So here is one graph from the technical report showing that the GPT-4 is really uh, good. So for instance, you know, uh, GRE testing, they are achieving uh, you know, 80 to almost 100% accuracy. Uh, and the uh, bar exams or LSAT, right? Uh, the lawyer test, they are uh, way, way better, the top five or 10%. So they are really good these days. And then GPT-4 is also known to be a multimodal, right? So if you give prompt as the images, then it seems language model understand what's going on on the images and then reason together with the given prompt and then can answer uh, the, the, uh, your question. Some people call even extreme, even including the ChatGPT as their uh, co-author. Okay? So I personally wouldn't do this, uh, but you know this is uh, how much it has advanced. And you know organizations, uh, communities are scared. So some are banning the usages of ChatGPT, others are banning the entire usage of language model. So leading machine learning conference, ICML specifically says you cannot use language model to generate the part of your research articles, okay? Uh, you know, why people are so scared? Is the language model perfect? Not really. Uh, it is not without problems, right? So there are many known uh, issues of language model among research uh, communities. So one, the language models are known to uh, verbatim copy, uh, some of which are personally uh, sensitive information and personally identified information. Uh, or privacy revealing information. So on the left-hand side, it shows that the uh, generated text uh, sometimes include the sensitive, sensitive information such as the social security number, email address, home address, and so on and so forth. And then my group went ahead and then uh, uh, also found out that not only the language model uh, memorize and then uh, generate the verbatim copy from the training data, sometimes they paraphrase and also they even uh, use the core idea and then elaborate or sometimes summarize it. Okay? Uh, and then in the uh, uh, plagiarism literature, all three of these are considered as the uh, type of a, uh, plagiarism. So if the students are thinking to use language model to do their homework, they're actually in danger of the, one of the three types of the uh, uh, plagiarisms. So they have to be really careful. Another uh, important uh, downside of the language model is called the hallucination. So this refers to the phenomenon where language model tended to generate something in a very confident manner, which is not factually correct, right? Factually not correct based on the, their training data or even the outside of their uh, training data. So on the left-hand side, uh, for this particular individual, Professor Joe at the NYU, the uh, authors asked language model to generate the uh, text. And then the language model generate the, the bottom text. And then after uh, the authors conserve with the uh, author, but I'm not, not also Professor Joe, all the yellows are factually incorrect. Okay. Uh, and on the right side, right hand side, after ChatGPT was introduced, actually uh, some people tried to ask ChatGPT to generate the fake news directly. And here, fake news is a vaccine is causing autism. And yet, ChatGPT uh, was able to generate the convincing argument trying to explain why a uh, vaccine can cause autism. Okay. So to the defense of the ChatGPT, after this incident was uh, reported, they quickly patched it. So now no longer is easy 
for we uh, for us to trick the uh, GPT to generate the fake news. But then again, you know, people are very creative, so they reported all kinds of jailbreaking episodes. So still using different types of the uh, prompt engineering, uh, you can still make the uh, language model, you know, uh, to be hallucinated and then generate all things kind of a uh, BS. So why this could be a problem for the fake news 2.0? Uh, you know, when you know, okay, so the uh, language model can generate this kind of hallucinated, factually incorrect the sentence, but you know, the uh, Marcelin and Keith can still generate it manually. Not much difference, right? So why it's big deal? Uh, one of the reasons is the, uh, the easy to scale. Okay? So the after 2016 event, researchers have studied and an interesting finding is that uh, from the land report that what the Russian uh, attackers use, their strategies are quite different from the what is uh, commonly accepted in the communication theory. Right? In the traditional communication theory, in order to convince and persuade somebody, your message should be precise and concise. But what the Russian did is they create the high volume of messages and the content may or may not be correct. They didn't care. They just created bombarded amount of the information because their goal is to create the uh, uncertainty. So as long as the, uh, the receiver get confused and they cannot make the decision which one is right and which one is not, then they succeeded. So to this you know, tactics uh, turns out to be you know, quite effective as we all know, but the only hindrance for this tactic is the resources. At that time, uh, reported the Russian troll spent over a million per month to establish this attack, which is not necessarily available to many of these small organizations. But now with the introduction of the language model, if I'm just happy with the uh, pre-trained model, it costs a zero dollars and it can just you know, spit out the uh, hallucinated factual incorrect information after again. Okay? If I want to even make it more sophisticated, then now the, we have uh, known ways to train uh, the language model with the you know, GPT-3 kind of a, a parameter size for fraction of a cost that uh, OpenAI spent. So it's now doable. Okay? So what can I do, for instance? Suppose I want to create the fake news about some fraud happening in Washington, D.C. Okay, it's not true. So then, you know, I would do, come up with the uh, clickbait title. I will use the language model to generate the accompanying text. I will use one of the uh, text to image generator to generate the accompanying images. And then I will format it. And then I will circulate it in my social media. And I bet this will be more effective than traditional two-line uh, text-based fake news. And because this cost virtually nothing to me, I didn't need to stop here. I can easily create UK version, Italian version, French version, okay? and this can go on. Okay? So that's the real danger of the fake news 2.0 with all these deep fake uh, uh, technologies. Uh, luckily, uh, we do not have a reported uh, episode of the attacks using the deep fake text. Most of the uh, episodes are known are uh, using the defect image and videos. Okay? And they are uh, a bit targeted, not the uh, mass scale. But you know, the, uh, my worry is that uh, sooner or later, uh, such large scale attacks might happen. Okay? Uh, so far, the attacks have been largely uh, targeted at the celebrities, politicians, NGO activists, or some of the uh, porn, uh, the video uh, cases. Okay? But you know, this will only increase as time goes on. So what can they do? So obvious, uh, the tools for computer scientists to deal with this is to auto detect defects. So people have been studying a lot on these uh, issues. Uh, so let me show you a few examples, uh, uh, one from the my group. So uh, here we assembled about 20 uh, well-known language models. So this is, uh, let's call this machine authors. Okay? And then we did two tests, human test and then the machine test. First, uh, we use the New York Times article, their headline as the prompt, and then we generate the corresponding uh, content using each of these language models. Okay? So for the same headline, we have a New York Times reporter written article, as well as the uh, machine written article, two set. Okay? So in the first set, we randomly pick either machine written or human written, 
we present one to the uh, Amazon mechanical Turk users and ask, do you think this is machine written? And they will say yes and no. So it has a 50% chance. In the second configuration, we show two articles, one written by machine, the other written by human. Okay? And then we tell them, one is definitely machine written. Do you think which one is machine written? Okay? And then we get their a response and then measure their accuracy. So both case, random guessing is a 50%. Now at the bottom, if you average all, humans are terribly uh, uh, you know, bad. They are not really able to detect defect text. Okay? Their accuracy is only slightly better than random guessing. Now, if we build uh, five uh, detectors based on the neural network architecture, so these are essentially binary classifiers uh, because we have a lot of the human written and machine written uh, data uh, separate from the test uh, domain. We feed it in the supervised learning uh, manner to these binary classifiers and then you know, train them. And then we uh, do the same testing. Right? And each number indicates how good they are. So if it close to one, then their detection ac accuracy of the uh, uh, machine, the defect text is supposed to be perfect. If it's zero, then it's a terrible. So some are not so much better than humans, but others are clearly better. Right? So bird-based uh, architectures uh, seem to perform much better at the time, achieving the 80 to 90%. Okay? Uh, so you, know, you, may, you can imagine that humans are usually looking at superficial uh, linguistic features where uh, defect uh, uh, the architecture ones, uh, we cannot tell on how exactly they are learning, but you know, something is going on, so they're clearly doing better job than a uh, human. Okay? And out of the 20, uh, we sort of expected the GPT-3 would perform the best, but surprisingly at that time, uh, the Facebook model performed much better. So Facebook model, uh, language model called FAIR, they were very resistant. Whatever they generate using the, any uh, the detection models, we couldn't really tell the difference between human and uh, machine. Okay. And then the follow-up study, we made the setting a bit more challenging. So instead of the binary, we have a ternary situation here. So again, seeing the New York Times article with the headline, and we selected the first three paragraphs, and we randomly swap one of the paragraphs with the machine generated one uh, using the GPT-3. Uh, so here, red ones are uh, GPT-3 generated paragraphs. So for instance, in order to generate the, this paragraph, we use the title as a prompt and let it generate this one. To generate this one, we use a P1 as the prompt and then let the language model generate P2. After we did this, we uh, examined the flow, the semantics of flow of the all three paragraphs and make sure that things are flowing well. Right? Uh, so in the test set, we have uh, only reasonable, uh, reasonably challenging uh, test set. So in this second study, our uh, goal is slightly different. Uh, we have a regular mechanical talk users, but we also recruit the so-called expert users who have an English bachelor degree or several uh, months of the proof reading experience. So the, our hypothesis is maybe uh, this uh, individual with the expertise in English might perform better than the regular. So that's the first hypothesis. Second hypothesis is the teams if the individual is not so good at, what about the team? Can they perform better? Okay. And we had a two teams. In the one team, we invited three people to come to the Zoom, let them discuss. And at the end, uh, they give us uh, their consensus uh, body, whether you know, one of the three pair of is the uh, machine written or not. In the first uh, team, it's a virtual in the sense that they do not discuss uh, directly. The first person comes, uh, this person gives the answer, P2 must be answered. Okay. When the second person comes, we show the task as well as the answer from the previous uh, participant. So the second person has more information to determine. Third person comes, now this person has the answer from the two previous uh, persons. So sort of the sequential, uh, the asynchronous uh, team formation. So our finding is, this is the accuracy. The best case is the uh, three experts collaboratively determine. Uh, what is a fake and what is not. They are uh, twice better than the random guessing. So our first hypothesis uh, holds, the, if you have a certain expertise in English or literature, you seem to perform better uh, beyond the st statistical significance. Uh, team better than individual, yes and no. Uh, if it's an online face-to-face 
uh, collaborative environment, yes, clearly you uh, get help. But if it is the uh, you know sequential limited uh, team formation, maybe not. It doesn't help. So the, clearly you need to better uh, implementation of the team if you want to uh, benefit. Uh, okay. So this is uh, sort of the uh, recent effort to detect the defect text. For the media also, people have been research, uh, researching very actively. Uh, 2020, Facebook ran this competition. Uh, so what they did is they, in order to avoid the uh, copyright issue, they hired a bunch of Hollywood actors, uh, gave the camera, asked them to video record themselves in different conditions, indoor, outdoor, good con uh, light condition, bad light condition. And then they mixed into the uh, defect videos and then invite the researchers to uh, identify defect videos. So here again, half are defects, half are real Hollywood actors. I'll show you just answer because this is not possible. These are Hollywood actors and the other three are defect videos. Okay. So this is a three year ago experiment and then the winning solution out of the thousands of the entries achieved the uh, accuracy level somewhat close to 65 to 70%. Right? So this is a winning solution worldwide, but still there is a 30 to 40% gap to the uh, perfect uh, situation. Uh, you know, the, since it's a three years ago, I'm sure the technology have advanced, so accuracy uh, might be much higher, uh, but you know, the uh, still is uh, quite challenging. Uh, here is one technique they I thought is uh, kind of cute. Uh, so they say that the defake generated images tended to have human pupil with the irregular shape. Whereas the human tend to have a circular or over shape. So if you can extract that and then use it as a feature, then although there are some confusion, but you know, a lot of cases it becomes very critical signal. So you can have a very good accuracy. Okay. Uh, sadly, after this paper came out, within weeks, the uh, new GAN algorithm remitting uh, this issue was deposited to the uh, hugging phase. So this is really ended this uh, you know, the battle. Okay, so that's the first scenario on the defect, uh, the artifacts. Second is the, uh, when adversaries are attacking the frequency detection uh, ecosystem. So uh, here the visualization shows uh, roughly, uh, the, uh, a lot of research done on the fake news and roughly half of them uh, are on the detection problem. So the how to detect the questionable content is the really extensively studied. Uh, even in my group, we had a couple of solutions. For instance, this one, we, uh, we hypothesized that when questionable contents are circulating in the social network, sometimes users review and then they give the signal why this is true or why this is not, uh, not true. And if we can identify such reputation messages and link it back to the questionable contents, then not only it helps us to detect the fake news better, we can also use this as a way to explain why this is fake or why this is true. Okay? And then we achieve the uh, reasonable success here. And then in the subsequent research, we also uh, try to apply this into the uh, medical domain. But you know, the, the, in the medical domain, what we found out is that unlike the social media and the Twitter, uh, unless you have expertise on a certain uh, you know, medical field like uh, diabetes or COVID, people rarely uh, leave comments. So there are not many uh, repeatable uh, messages we can use it. Right? So to, in order to apply the previous idea, instead here we use the knowledge graph as the sort of the actuality uh, structure, but exactly the same idea. In the knowledge graph, by doing the uh, link prediction and the node prediction, we're trying to identify uh, some, some triplet that is helping us to identify the factual, uh, the veracity, and also the explain uh, things better. So, so we uh, show that, that this can be done in the medical domain using the knowledge graph. And there are dozens and dozens of the fake news detection models out there. Right? And you know, outside of the research community, social platforms, they all have in-house team, you know, hundreds of people, uh, and then they own the, uh, the algorithms implemented. So here the screenshot shows the Facebook's attempt to uh, deploy uh, this kind of detection models. So now uh, the, I am the John Doe, Masunin Inki, and I do not like the, my fake news, uh, they're getting the, uh, detected and the, my account to get blocked, right? So I'm gonna uh, hire somebody who attack the fake news detection mechanism such that 
Bayesian detection uh, mechanism will now say true news as a false and then false news as true, right? So it doesn't uh, function anymore. So it will lower the reputation of the existing uh, fake news detection ecosystem. Okay, so, you know, how do we do it? Uh, again, the idea is really simple and then it is the uh, adaptive from the security uh, literature. So, you know, what is going on in the uh, latest state-of-the-art fake news detection models is that, uh, you know, here screenshot is showing the typical Twitter. So you have a, a headline, some embedded images and content and the lots of the user engagement at the bottom, okay? Uh, so then the modern uh, fake news detection model try to comprehensively use everything as a feature, right? The, all the content, user engagement, how things have propagated to you, what is the past history of this particular account, and so on and so forth. All these things as the uh, comprehensive comp 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 feature, and then uh, give you the binary signal or sometimes the uh, multi-class signals. And, and you know, the, our solution is one, and then Facebook's no model is called the PIES, which they revealed in the 2021. So I want to attack this scenario. The, the hacker wants to attack this scenario by modifying some of these. So that if I modify something here, it will uh, propagate that to the uh, feature as the poisonous features that eventually confuse the fake news detection model and they will mess up this uh, classification. That's the idea. So if I want to attack the guardian, well, the, I'm not really uh, sure if I can edit right, what they posted to their uh, Twitter account unless I hack their account and have the uh, right permission, which is uh, you know, whole a lot of different challenges. So the more practical approach is to look at this bottom part, the user comments. Right? So user comments, anybody can create the account, let the account follow the guardian and then start writing comments and they will appear in the guardians, the fee, and it has a chance to uh, the, uh, get into the features uh, and so on. So the, the idea is to create adversary examples and make the uh, poisonous attack, right? So then the, the remaining uh, step is a really uh, mechanical uh, step, right? So I want to generate the poisonous malicious comments, uh, but what are the desiderata of those malicious comments? Okay, so you know, given the genuine comments, I start to generate some malicious comments, and at some point, I want to change the prediction okay, from the real to fake and fake to real. So uh, we focus on the three desiderata. First is that whatever we automatically generate in this malicious comment, it should appear to be written uh, by human. Right? If it's not, uh, then it can be easily filtered by the uh, filtering mechanism of this uh, platform. Second, whatever topic that in this malicious comment uh, talk about should be adhered to what's going on in this uh, thread. Okay? So if the thread is talking about the COVID and my malicious comment suddenly talk about the you know, soccer, that doesn't make sense. And then finally, after accum the accumulation of a certain malicious comment, at some point, our comment should uh, help flip the prediction of the uh, detection model. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna uh, skip the all the technical details, but just uh, show the high level architecture here. So we have a, a, a our solution is called the Micron. We have a three component. In the middle, we have essentially a very tiny language model. Right. So until we reach the maximum length of the uh, malicious comment one token at a time, we just generate one by one, okay? But each time we have a two regulator. The first regulator is to, to look at the style of our comment and make sure that it has a human style, not the machine style. And inside we have a sort of small GAN type discriminator. So each time we generate it, uh, it you know, say in flag, this is a human uh, written or machine written. And if it's uh, uh, detected as a machine written, we you know, send it back the feedback and next time try to generate the better quality comment. And this you know, is uh, uh, iterated many, many times. Second regulator is just uh, essentially measuring the semantic distance. So the hour, the, the topic of the hour comment should remain within the vicinity of the uh, what's going on in the uh, thread. So we do not go astray too far away. So once these three modules are ready, we simulate the uh, attack uh, scenario in both a white box and then your black box uh, setting. 
Okay. So at that time, we uh, used the five uh, the state of the art detection models, and we demonstrated that uh, the, if we have a uh, the on amount uh, limit of the fake uh, the malicious comment to generate, then we can achieve near perfect the uh, success rate. If we limit the number of comments that we can generate to uh, 10, then the our success rate remains between 70 to 80 percent. But you know, these are quite a reasonable approaches. And those are five detection models at that time, all state of the art, some are uh, reportedly being used uh, in, in, in uh, platforms. Okay? So, so you know, the, what this demonstrates is the detection model employed at that time is not very robust. It's possible to compute them and actually, uh, you know, make my Macedonian website still remain, avoiding the, uh, uh, that detection. And as I look at the, uh, this year's triple W uh, proceeding, I see the one word, uh, essentially the same idea. So they also argue that you can confuse and attack fake news detection models by manipulating some of the features in their case, Instead of uh, us manipulating the user comments, they manipulate the, uh, the network features, especially the uh, social links. Okay? So they create the account, let the account uh, you know, they follow or engage in the, uh, different kind of uh, edges, thereby creating confusion in the uh, network model, and then achieving the very similar result. As, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm glad to see another work with a similar idea, demonstrating that this kind of attack is entirely possible. We reported that problem to the Facebook at that time, I'm not sure if they ever uh, you know, address it in their uh, deployed the system or not. Okay, third scenario is the uh, where adversaries strategize the spread of fake news. Um, so you know, the imagine that you are more sophisticated the state-backed actors. You try to spread the uh, disinformation. However, uh, every now and then, your social bot accounts get detected and then blocked, okay? So you have this two goals. You want to maximize the influence. In our context, this means that you want to spread fake news better, you know, further, broader, deeper. That's your goal. But also, you do not want to get detected uh, because creating and maintaining social bot account is uh, quite expensive, okay? Uh, the, uh, the reportedly, this uh, social bot are, are, are very expensive. Some of them, you know, early on, they you know, create a new account uh, from the scratch and then try to uh, maintain it by uh, posting a few and you know, making friends and so on. But then later, uh, they sometimes purchase uh, less use, but still human created uh, you know, account from the teenagers for $10 and things like that. And then uh, they uh, try to maintain. Uh, but yet, you know, only the small fraction of this. Uh, fake news accounts are being detected, sadly. And nevertheless, this is a very precious resource for them. So they want to minimize this detectability. Uh, so, so these two goals, if you think about it, these two goals are a bit interwined, right? If you want to spread the fake news further, you have to do more active research, activity. You have to do more activities, right? You have to post it, you have to make friends, you have to retweet, and so on and so forth. Okay? And as you become more active, your chance to get detected by detector also increases. Okay? So if you want to evade, it's better not to do anything, but then you are not achieving this goal. If you want to achieve this, your likelihood to get detection increases. So this is sort of the contradicting goal. So how do we achieve this as the, from the adversary's point of view? That's the research question. So we uh, use the reinforcement learning framework to address this one. Uh, again, uh, without going into technical details, let me show the uh, intuition using the Tori example. Okay? So imagine this kind of a social network. It can be Instagram network, it can be Twitter network. Uh, in our case, we use a Twitter uh, like a network as an example. Uh, to study this problem, we need uh, some sort of the uh, inference model. So we use this classical one called the independent cascade model. This is a well accepted and heavily used model in the uh, network science type literature. Uh, you know, it, it has only a few uh, the assumptions, like uh, every node can be either infected or not infected to status. And the probability to infect your neighbor 
is that, you know, the, this, the proportionally uh, to the uh, number of the links that you had. And as you go further away from uh, uh, node, your probability becomes a smaller and smaller. Right? So it's a very uh, small number of assumption. Uh, each of them is very intuitive uh, uh, model. So here I create the, or I have a, this fake news account. Now using this account, I want to spread fake news uh, better. Since nobody is uh, uh, following my account, I cannot spread it initially. So I have to first recruit somebody to follow me. Okay? The first decision is out of the millions of the node, which node do I need to approach it and try to convert to my follower? So that's the first decision point. And depending on your decision, you might have a quite different consequence. Okay? So suppose I targeted A for whatever reason. Okay? And A seems to have only one follower currently. And then second decision point is social platforms allow you to many different types of activities and each activity has a different, again, the consequence. And out of these activities, what will you do it to get the attention, right? And on the platforms such as the Twitter, for instance, you can tweet, you can retweet, mention, reply, and so on and so forth, right? So suppose I first decide to mention A to get the attention like this, and then somehow A notice and then decide to follow me back. So now I establish a link. At this point, if I have a fake news, post it, it will naturally go to A's time feed. And since A also have a follower, it will go to uh, uh, B's time feed and so on and so forth. But as you go further from A, it will become a uh, less and less probability. So, so one uh, critical uh, the issue is if you want to really maximize your influence, it's good to have a good network of uh, followers. Okay? So that's the uh, critical objective. But suppose instead of A, you decide to convert to B instead. Okay? And here, B has a four follower, but imagine that there are uh, hundreds of the followers for B. So B is a bit more popular, uh, more influential uh, user in this network. Okay. So I did uh, some, some action and then now B followed me back. So I established a link. And then if I post my fake news, it will go to B. And then it will go to hundreds of B's followers and uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So when you compare A and B, uh, in terms of inference and the magnitude, B is probably better candidate to convert than A because you know, I was able to uh, maximize my influence. But in order to convert B, what uh, did you have to pay? Right? For the A, I just did one mention, and then uh, B, uh, and then B followed me back. But for B, because B has uh, hundreds and thousands of the followers, very busy influ influencer. Unless I do my due diligence and homework, probably B will not notice me, and then very less likely that B will follow me back. Right? So. I have to do lots of lots of uh, due diligence to get the attention. Okay? And then even further, if the B is Elon Musk, no matter what I do, he will never follow me back. So some uh, users, uh, there's a, a zero chance to convert. Okay? So the decision making that who you try to convert and what action you will uh, take have a, uh, the stark consequences to your two uh, objectives here. And then uh, many state of the art the social bot detectors, they run in the batch mode. So like in the Twitter, let's say every 3 a.m., uh, they run this detection model, identify some account and then they block them. And many of these uh, detection models monitor all the activities that you did. Okay? And then if I just do one mention, then maybe it looks legitimate, that's fine. But if I do thousands of the actions to get the attention from the Elon Musk, then I become very suspicious and become vulnerable to this uh, social bot detection. Okay, so connecting with the influential user immediately give me the better conduit to influence my messages, but also becomes very really risky. So this is a strategic decision uh, to the adversaries. So with this understanding, we uh, develop this architecture called the Acon. Uh, so we have a, uh, we just use the hierarchical reinforcement learning framework. So we have a two agent. First agent uh, decide which action should it take and there's a, a reward for each action. And the second agent 
decide which user to contact and try to convert. Okay? Again, there is a, a different uh, the, the reward. Okay? And then we try to optimize. Uh, so for instance, one reward function that we can optimize is the number of users uh, that can be reached through the propagation. So uh, we let the agent pick one type of users and one type of actions. And then we uh, calculate the reward or penalty. We share this feedback to the agent and we repeat this thousand times. And hopefully uh, the over time, the agent becomes smarter and smarter and they make the better strategic decisions. So at the end, uh, we uh, were able to achieve that uh, the new the spreading uh, the algorithm based on this uh, framework can increase the network influence by 18% and then uh, reduce the detectability by 40%. So this could be quite an uh, effective tool for adversaries if they want to deploy it. Right, so let's uh, wrap up. Uh, so I presented three scenarios. First scenario, uh, machine can uh, create artifacts uh, to create the confusion. Second, uh, the AI machines can uh, attack the fake news detection ecosystem, thereby uh, the, the confusing the, uh, the causing the confusion again. And third, uh, they can strategize the spreading so that uh, they achieve their goal uh, without uh, being detected. Okay. So, you know, fake news 1.0, as I showed the uh, visualization early on, we have a uh, the lot of researches. If I just go to the archive again, just a search uh, research article with the fake news uh, inside of title, I have this many, right? So they, this is really active research field. And some of the recent solutions are claiming that they have 95% uh, accuracy. Some even achieved 98, 99%. So very accurate in their claim. Uh, how they actually uh, perform in the wild, that's a, a different question, but at least in the research article, uh, we've achieved very good uh, performance. So does that mean that the uh, fake news 1.0 is largely served? Uh, not really. Uh, still, there are some important issues remaining. So for instance, early detection is still very challenging. Uh, by and large, all state-of-the-art detection mechanisms uh, rely on digital footprints that these uh, the actors are left behind and then use it as a feature to detect it. So to use those as feature, you need to wait you know, a few hours. But if you wait you know, hours and days, damage has been already done it, right? So the idea, the oracle type situation is we detect questionable contents early on within minutes. So right now, this is not possible, okay? Multilingual, multi-platform, multi-domain, detection is still challenging. Uh, majority of the research are done in, in the English domain, uh, the training data, and then the articles are written about, about the uh, Western culture. Okay? So in our group, we try to see how effective they remain when they apply the uh, English trained detection model to low resource languages. Okay? And then uh, you know, consistently the accuracy drops by five to uh, ten percent, just that uh, in different languages. But you know, if you think about it, the fake news uh, do occur in different countries as well, right? Africa, uh, South uh, Asia, Latin America. So we really need a uh, multilingual, multi-platform detection mechanism. We have uh, some early success on the explaining why this is fake and why this is not, but still, uh, this is a long way to go. And probably most importantly. Many socio-technical or human factor issues uh, are not solved. Right? Uh, at Penn State, I did a once experiment. I had uh, our uh, lab built detection model detect some uh, fake news, and then we present that to the uh, students in my classes. Right? So the detection uh, shows that this is uh, fake news with the you know x y percentage of the certainty, and so on so forth, uh, detected by this algorithm in lots of details. And we asked the two questions, would you agree that this is fake news or not? Okay. Two, are you willing to share this in the social media? And what we found out is no matter how accurate the, our detection shows, students are uh, not readily uh, accepted. Okay. 
sometimes students uh, just they have a you know prejudice or they have, they have a different political agenda or whatever reasons, right? And they uh, don't buy that this is fake news and they're still going willing to share. So how to present and make the people to accept something is true, something is fake, and even further change their behavior. This type of uh, intervention is the you know, uh, vastly understudied and uh, important problem. So personally, I feel the fake news 1.0, we do not have a complete solution yet. And then now we have a fake news 2.0, right? So this makes the problem even more challenging. Uh, before, if something is the, uh, you know, the debatable, but at least we agree on one thing, which is if I show you the news article saying that this person says so, right? then you agree. But now, even if I show you a video clip, you can always say it could be defake. Right? So seeing is no longer believing, documentation is no longer evidence. Right? And, and more tra tragically, we have now this so-called implied false effect. The platform uh, flagging only a small fraction of the deep fake and then fake news uh, 2.0 as the questionable content. But you know, because of our limitation, large amount of the questionable content go undetected. Right? But people, as they see now, the, oh, some information is now flagged. So that means that something not flagged must be true. And they automatically believe it, which is far from the uh, truth. We are flagging only the small fraction of the uh, questionable content. And this is a quite a uh, disastrous uh, phenomenon is happening called the implied false effect. Okay? Uh, so this caused the confusion and some people get into this uh, status of the reality apathy. If you cannot tell which is true, which is not, you tend to resort to your old uh, belief and just you know, do not wanna uh, uh, reason uh, about this uh, the veracity. Okay? And we have to be mindful that whatever technology advancement that are available to us, are also equally available to bad guys too. And they are smart, they are technically uh, skillful, and they have resources. So, you know, they are able to generate the better quality, uh, undetectable fake news 2.0. And, you know, we need more research, but this is endless uh, cat and mouse typical scenario scenario. Okay? At the end, who will win? We will uh, see. But this is uh, uphill better, it's not necessarily uh, easy. Okay? So that's it that I want to uh, share today. Thank you for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to uh, share.